The San Luis Valley in Colorado is the highest alpine valley in the world and is considered by many to be the UFO capital of America. This video will feature an exclusive in-depth interview with Josh Brinkley, a local hunter that claims to have witnessed two aliens and a large spacecraft near Pot Mountain along the border of Colorado and New Mexico. Brinkley's testimony is quite chilling and he even shares for the first time on our channel that a local rancher contacted him and explained that one of his bulls was mutilated in the exact same area that Josh and his hunting partner Daniel saw the craft. Josh shared photos with me of the mutilated bull, which was missing its eyes, that had seemed to have been cut and sliced with surgical precision. Cattle mutilations are not all that uncommon these days. There have been thousands of these reported all throughout the country, and the world's first official report of a mutilation happened right here in the San Luis Valley, near San Luis, Colorado, not far from where the two hunters reported to have their experience. In September of 1967, Snippy the horse was found in a nearby field with her head stripped down to the bone. The cuts were unusual and it did not appear to have been done by a predator. The person that found Snippy reported a strong chemical-like smell in the air and was baffled that the horse was lying about 100 feet away from its most recent tracks. The investigation into the horse's death was carried out by the sheriff, who concluded that the cause was a lightning strike. However, weather records indicated that there was no lightning activity in this area during the time period in question. Following this, an employee from the United States Forest Service arrived on the scene and conducted tests using a Geiger counter. The results show that the area surrounding the burn marks was radioactive, as was some green residue and metal object wrapped in the horse's hair that was found 100 feet away from Snippy's body. Several days after the discovery of the horse, Dr. John Altscholler, an accomplished pathologist, was caught trespassing at the nearby Great Sand Dunes after dark. Upon being reprimanded by the police for his illegal behavior, he pleaded with them to keep his identity hidden, fearing that his reputation and career would be ruined if word got out that he was actually out there searching for UFOs. When the officers learned of Dr. Altscholler's expertise in blood coagulation, they offered to overlook his offense if he would accompany them to Harry King's ranch and examine the remains of the horse to see if he, as a medical expert, could provide any insight. Upon examination, he observed that the horse's lungs, heart, and thyroid were entirely absent with extremely precise cuts. The brain, abdominal organs, and spinal column were also missing. The edges of the sliced skin were a dark black color, and there was a noticeable lack of blood which struck Dr. Altscholler as peculiar, as he had never before performed an autopsy without observing at least some blood. He went on to describe the edges of the skin as appearing to have been cauterized. Since that time, there have been countless people experiencing and reporting high strangeness and flying objects all over the valley. The story of Josh Brinkley and Daniel Lucero is one of the more bizarre and frightening. When I went to the San Luis Valley to film, my original plan was to climb Pot Mountain to get some footage, but after listening to Josh Brinkley's testimony about what he saw up there, I must admit that I got a little spooked and I decided to keep my distance and film the mountain from afar. Here's the in-depth testimony of what Josh Brinkley says he saw that day on Pot Mountain. Using Google Earth, Josh tells me the story while showing the exact location of the beans and craft that he believes he witnessed start out like any other hunt um getting ready at the house been looking forward to it all year um i actually had a, a new hunting partner this year named daniel lucero and he hadn't hunted elk before so i was kind of looking forward to taking him so i just remember getting ready like normal getting with daniel we hopped in my jeep uh headed up to the mountain set up camp looked around a little um and just kind of uh Made a plan for the next morning. We camped that night. And the next morning we got up, had some coffee. Um, started hiking up towards the top of the mountain. It's about a 45-minute hike. It's kind of a smaller mountain. And uh, I kind of positioned Daniel where I thought would be a good spot. I'd hunted that mountain for about 15 years. Left him there and carried on. Hiked another 10, 15 minutes uh, to my place where I wanted to hunt, overlooking a nice meadow. Probably stayed there for a couple hours, I'd say, a few hours. Um, it's probably 9, 30, 10. 
and I just hadn't seen anything. Um, hadn't heard any elk, hadn't seen any sign. So I was getting a little restless. So I started to walk around and went up to uh, the, the caldera on the very top of this mountain, just kind of looking around. And I take a couple steps towards the edge of this caldera and I look to my left and I see what I thought was a couple hunters. And uh, which kind of surprised me right away because I figured I was always the early bird. But I uh, saw these two, what I thought were hunters. I remember waving at them even. I remember taking my eyes off them and walking around this side uh, to jump down these little rocks to uh, maybe get a better look. And um, went around a tree and uh, they were still there. So I sat there and looked at them for a while. And I couldn't tell if I was looking at the back of them or the front of them. And uh, it seemed like they were identical. There was two of them. They were identical in size, shape, color. Um, I figured it might have been a couple hunters with the same jackets on. Um, I did notice uh, kind of some white and gray and black kind of uh, ribbon type shapes on each side of what I was considering like the hood or head area. Um, I noticed like a cat eye shape um, on their chest um, or their back, you know, whichever it be. And I think I, I sat in there for a few minutes and uh, figured I'd walk over there. So started walking, walked around these bushes and uh, their little junipers and uh, got to where I figured I could just see them and walk right towards them. Um, I, I was probably 35, 40 yards away when I first saw them. So after going around these bushes, uh, these little juniper trees, I figured I'd be like 15 yards from them and just see them. Of course, they were gone. Um, I couldn't tell how they vanished like they did. I do remember feeling kind of uh, like now I know why the elk aren't here. Now I know why I'm not seeing any elk sign. Um, maybe the other hunters came from the east side of the mountain there, got up there before I did. Um, so I remember walking back down to Daniel and uh, letting him know. You know there's, I saw a couple hunters up there. And so maybe that's why, you know, there's no elk up here. Um, let's go back to camp. So we headed back to camp. I remember telling him, just, just I, was, I was a little hesitant to tell him, really, but I, I finally looked at Daniel and I said, you know, I don't, I don't know if those were hunters. I, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. They kind of look like spacemen or, um, I don't know. It just, it, it, I guess it started to creep me out a little later. Um, so we kind of talked about that. I described them, um, told them about the little metallic ribbons kind of around their hood area, told them how their hoods or heads seemed a little big. Um, their arms kind of seemed skinny uh, and how they look like spacemen, spacemen. You know, I just I couldn't put it any other way. I couldn't figure that out. And, I, and you know, you feel weird telling people about that. Uh, we kind of laughed it off, uh, just like, wow, that's that's quite the trip. Um, and I uh, didn't think much about it. Um, went to bed that night, you know, and uh, woke up early the next morning. We had a plan to do a few mile loop just a little south of us. And we did a whole two, three mile loop. Um, hunted till about 2.30, didn't see a thing, no sign, no smells, no nothing. Um, I thought that was very strange. Um, and then I started to think, you know, wait a minute, we're not, we're not seeing any birds or squirrels or, you know, usually when you're hunting in the woods, a lot of hunters will know there's always that squirrel that's ratting you out, making the most noise when you're trying to be the most quiet. And uh, we didn't run in any squirrels, any, I didn't even notice any birds. And uh, Daniel said the same thing. And so we, we got back to my Jeep about 2.33, and we figured we'd drive around to more of the north side, maybe a little west, northwest, uh, east, northeast, I should say, of the mountain, um, I knew of an old burn, uh, uh, old forest fire that was over there. And, uh, you know, I'd heard of a lot of hunters hunting that area. So that's usually why I didn't hunt it, but decided to drive over there. 
So we start driving and there's a road that kind of goes around the whole base of this mountain. Um, so we got around the mountain. We were probably half mile, three quarters of a mile from our camp. And all of a sudden we see what appeared to be like a white circus tent. Um, I think it'd be over a mile away, a mile and a half away at this point. Um, we see this big white structure or something in the middle of the, uh, you know, this whole Taos area and this whole, uh, the whole Pot Mountain area. It's, it's, uh, it's flat. It has sporadic mountains. Um, you can see a long way. And it seems like some the area that the ship was in, it'd be hard to get. Like, at first I thought it was like the movies had set up a catering tent or something like that. But access to this area seemed like it'd be a little difficult for that size of an operation, actually. Um, so as we got closer and closer to this thing, um, we started to realize how big it was. Um, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And we'd lose sight of it every now and then. It's flat up there, but it, it's got some hills and some terrain. And you kind of go through some washes and around some little bends and around some little rock outcroppings and, you know, fingers that come down off the base of the mountain there. And you'll drive around these and the contour of the land. So we'd lose sight of this uh, ship or tent or whatever. But it'd, it'd be there when we come around the corner or pop up the hill. It'd, it'd still be there. So we figured it was man-made. You know, I, I figured it'd be something cool. We'd get up next to it, you know see who was here, see what was going on. It wasn't blowing us away just yet. Um, so we kept driving closer and closer to it. We got within about a quarter mile, uh, maybe a little less than a quarter mile from it, and went down into this little wash and kind of came up the wash, and it was gone. I guessed it to be 50 to 60 feet tall, 200 to 250 feet long or wide. Um, and it just vanished. Um, so now is when Daniel and I are looking at each other. Like, what the hell was that? Speechless for the longest time. You don't know what to say. Um, we just kept driving towards it. We got to where it was, um, or where we thought it was. Uh, pulled over, got out of the Jeep. Walked around, looked all over, spent a couple hours looking for anything, any footprint, any anything. Um, of course, we didn't find anything. I felt like it was big enough to report it, so we did. Oh, who did I call right away? I called the uh, research, you know, the UFO hotline. As, you know, we looked that up and we came up with the, uh, we talked to the hotline. Um, the Taos News. In fact, we drove into town right away and uh, went to the news um, with it, the newspaper. Told them our story. Um, you know, we spent a couple hours at the Taos newspaper. Um, after that, we went and drove back out to camp. And but uh, so I do remember driving back out to camp, and the whole time, just Danny and I look at each other, shake our heads, like, "What the hell?" We can talk about anything else. Maybe um, right now we could kind of go look for a few of those areas. So, right, right. And this I, is this is a at one point it has a caldera. So I don't know if I don't know the technicalities on volcanoes on what is and what isn't a volcano. But this clearly right. has some type of activity in the past, correct? Right, right. Yep, Pot Mountain was an, is an old volcano, and there's a little caldera left on top right here and that's where i saw the two beings um right there do you want to zoom in on that area right there and, and right where you saw those two beings and just kind of show exactly where you think you probably were versus where they were i had walked right up this 
little area here and started to walk down this edge here. And while I was here overlooking the caldera, right over in this area is where I saw the two beings. Um, right up right up in this area right here. Um, and as you can see, like these bushes right here is scrub oak. They're not real tall. Um, you could walk through them and, you know, and still see somebody. You'd have to duck to uh, be hidden in there. There's these junipers now and then, as you can see here. But all this stuff, if there was a couple hunters or a couple people walking, you would see them. So I'm standing here. They're right in this area. I'm waving to them. Nothing's happening. I feel like I'm seeing them move. It's not like they were sitting perfectly still. Like I remember kind of seeing like they, like if a person's standing there, you'll see them kind of move every now and then, just you know, like a little better. I didn't see them scratch their head or anything like that, but I did. I did feel like they were kind of moving, um, as in you know, swaying. Um, I, could, I could kind of see a movement. So I decided to get closer to him, and this is where I just headed right up here and got to where I was just right up here, and I figured I'd be looking right at him. And there's nothing. There's nothing. All the way over near here, especially out in this area. Especially all the way down to the edge of the mountain, way over here. You, someone could be walking, and that's probably almost a mile to right there. Um, of course, down on the caldera, you'd see anybody. Um, so there's not a lot of cover. In fact, if you keep going over, you'll hit nothing but fields. It's nothing but more open meadows up here. And when you start making your way back to Daniel, is there any part of you at that point that's said in your mind out loud now, those weren't hunters, those weren't even, I, those weren't I, even people? Absolutely. I did say that to myself um, a few times. Um, I was just going over and over in my head. You know, were, were those like some sort of, uh, they definitely look like spacemen, the kind you would see on uh, old movies or something. Um, so I do remember thinking that, yes, definitely. You told us that that night you you talked to Daniel and you said, hey, you know, I saw something strange. I wasn't sure if I was going to tell you about this or not, but it, it was really weird to me. Next day, you all decide to go check out the burn scar and you do the basically the circle around the mountain. Is that correct? Right. You want to show yeah. us on Google Earth, kind of just giving us a visualization of the events that led up to you all driving toward this thing. Absolutely. So my camp, like I said earlier, was right around here on this west side of the mountain here. So basically what you do is you'll drive around the mountain, you'll come this way, it'll take you out just a little bit, and you'll start working your way around the north side of the mountain here. There's a big burn scar right here. It's an old forest fire. We got to where we were probably right over in this area here. Yeah, the road's right out here. It's actually out here. So we're probably right out in here. We were probably right out in this area, and we could see what looked to be like a huge spaceship or a circus tent <laughs> right out in this area here. There's a little out rock outcropping. I'm just going to take a second to find it here. There's a little spine of a hill. Just see. Let me just find it real quick, Will. Yeah, it's over by this spine here. Because it was right off that road. Yeah, right up in here. This is that little hill. Yeah, there's a little hill here. And that ship thing was out in this area here. When we first saw it, we were still way over in this area circus tent a movie tent they're filming a movie we're just talking about this as we're driving and and i knew we were going to be near it 
So I'm, and and that's the thing, you know. You're not like, oh my god, I need to film, oh record, or what the heck, you know. It it looked, you know, man made, and we we're driving right towards it. Of course, you know, our phones are off in our packs and like Ziploc bags with my wallet in my hunting pack. You know, I'm kind of like that. Um, you didn't think it was going to be going anywhere. It looked like it was just there. So you weren't in a you weren't in a rush to get your phone out necessarily. Right, right. It, it it didn't look like it was going anywhere, that's for sure. So we drove closer and closer. We worked our way down this mountain here, or down this road. And uh, we got to where we were about a quarter mile from it. Maybe over in this area. This area here, probably. When you really get into it, there's terrain. You know, this looks like a little wash here. This is like a little hill here. Corners, hills. So we would lose sight of it. We lost sight of it a bunch, but when we came around the corner, it'd still be there. So yeah, we got to where about a quarter mile or a little less, I'd say, um, from it. Came around the corner, it was gone. Um, actually went down a little wash thing, came up over that little wash, and it was gone. Um, so I remember finding a little path a little road and we took our jeep down it took my jeep down it this could be it here i remember there, there's actually a there was a gate over here somewhere this could be it right here there's another fence line right there so i remember parking here somewhere around there and walking over into this area and we spent a couple hours walking with nothing um did you have anybody um flat out you know express their skepticism toward you or uh try to poke any holes in your story yeah um well you the first thing um well the first couple things one was like you know d you didn't film it you know um and the other obviously was uh you know the whole pop mountain thing um a lot of people jumped on that right um, like you know pop mountain yeah you were you know, high or whatever. Um, Were you of sober mind at the time? Oh, of course. Yeah. I was a commercial driver then. Uh, and I'm still a commercial driver on a uh, fire engine. So, uh, yeah, we're very sober. Um, uh, you know, I'd hear everything from that um, to just trying to get attention. Um uh then a lot of good things too all the and it, and it was really cool and really interesting to hear different views um i've got the you know of course the alien stuff the spaceship theories um uh, of course all the guys with the government theories um you know the air force government and all that stuff uh, a lot of people, in fact, a very interesting one was the fourth and fifth dimension people, uh, which I think is great. Um, <laughs> great. Uh, blows your mind to, to think that deep. But people, you know, saying we saw into another dimension, which uh, uh, to them was easier to explain than like cloaking buildings <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So what do you think you saw that day, Josh, out of all the theories you've heard, you know, you know, to add on to that question, were you a believer before this? And and what do you think now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before that, um, I hadn't had any counters. Uh, I wasn't as open to any of those theories. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really know. Um, I didn't, uh, yeah, I wasn't into it. Never thought about it. Um, I, I guess wasn't really a believer, I, I guess. Um, yeah, just did, didn't think about it much. I've always been kind of a see-it-to-believe-it type of guy, I guess. Um, you know, you know, my background is, you know, we're fishing, hunting, bucking hay, dealing with animals cutting trees down we're pretty real guys you know and uh you know probably I'm, I'm one of the last types that would make things up i think um but i tell you what i went to an instant believer <laughs> so um 
And what exactly do you think you saw that day? I feel like I saw an alien spacecraft. Um, I've had dreams of it. Um, I've had daydream like flashes of it. Uh, I, I feel like it was real, and 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 I don't mind um, telling the story. I don't feel that crazy because I wasn't the only person that saw it. Right. Um, you know, I, I just feel lucky that I saw it. So when you yeah. were looking at them, and they're looking back at you, do it all. Do you think at all there was any possibility that they were trying to communicate with you? Uh, whether it be, um, you know, through the mind, uh, through some type of body language, did you ever get any vibes of communication at all from them or that they were trying to tell you something? The only feeling I got that was like that was just the way that the shape of them and the look of them flash in my head all the time. <laughs> um, at the time, I don't, I don't remember feeling anything like that. Um, I don't remember feeling anything like that. Um, as I started walking back to Daniel is when some of those other feelings started popping up. Like, were those hunters? Should I tell Daniel? Um, and, you know, during that time is when, you know, I would think, well, if they didn't wave at me and they were space beings or aliens or whatever, that means they know I was there. They were studying me since they didn't just wave at me <laughs> and come over and talk to me. Maybe they were studying me. Um, of course, I'm sure their intelligence is you know, hard for us to comprehend, maybe. Yeah. So maybe they got all the info they needed out of me without even me knowing. Um, not sure. Um, right. But everything's gone through my head. But I didn't feel anything at the time, like they were getting into my head or trying to communicate with me whatsoever. Right. Um, yeah, so about a week after the, the Talos news came out, um, I was contacted by one of the ranchers that leased his uh, leased the land for his cows out there, and he told me a story about uh, you know, in the seventies. Um, I don't think it was him. Um, one of the ranchers out there had like thirteen bulls mutilated, and um, you know, he started telling me if. He kind of went off on a bunch of mutilation stories, but one in particular about this area, uh, north of Pot Mountain, actually. And, uh, you know, he's telling me the story about these mutilations, and it's like, wow. Well, he uh, told me he wanted to send me some pictures. I was like, okay. And uh, I, I hadn't, at this point, I hadn't been contacted by a bunch of people yet. Um, so I was really open to whatever, talking to everybody. Um, so he sent me these pictures. And uh, it looked to be a bull. Um, it was dead. It seemed to be dead for, if I had to guess, maybe a couple weeks. Um, looked like it was not fresh, but not that old either. Maybe a couple weeks old. Um you know, its eyeballs were removed and, like, uh, you know, it had a big hole in its chest. And, and he sent me these pictures. <laughs> and I was like, man, that's, that's kind of crazy. Is, is that, you know, those are your cows? And he was like, yeah, or is that your cow? I was like, yeah, that's my cow. And uh seemed to happen kind of maybe, if not the same night, a couple nights before your encounter. And, uh, That's, uh, I don't know, blew my mind. And uh, I ended up, I stayed in contact with this gentleman and actually his son as well. And, uh, you know, we're friends on Facebook now. Talked to him quite a few times over the last few years. And um, I thought that was incredible. Uh, that's when it all kind of started coming into 
you know, you know, because I'd ask myself, what did I see? What did I see? What did I see? After all these things started coming in, you know, it's just like, you know, and I, I saw some sort of alien spaceship. And, yeah, I think they might have mutilated some cows and ran off the elk. And <laughs> I started thinking all that type of stuff. So um felt like I was coming up with some answers, maybe. Uh, but so just I thought that was that was incredible, though. And I'll send you those pictures. I'd appreciate uh, that. Yeah. So just to clarify, he had contacted you, told you about you know, all these cattle, cattle mutilations that had happened in the 70s, but also shared with you that just a few days before your encounter, his own cattle was mutilated. Yep. That's exactly what he told me. Wow. He said it was one, he only said one bull. Um, but, you know, and he told me, you know, in all the years of his, he's kind of an older gentleman, in all the years he'd been a rancher, you know, uh, some of your stock will get taken out by predators. He said this didn't seem to be any predator um, that he noticed, and he didn't see any, like, predator cat tracks or bear tracks or any of that type of stuff. Um, uh, you know, I believed him. You know, he believed yeah. me. It's a well-documented phenomenon. You know, there's... yeah. There's Surgical precisions, you know, these mentioned the high, you know, it's very strange. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, 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 I called uh, my connection at Taos News uh, right away about that even. And uh, she thought it might have been a little heavy um, so soon or just period. Um, right. So, <laughs> uh, so consider this maybe some sort of exclusive <laughs> appreciate that josh <laughs> here at incredible history this land that he had this cattle mutilation happen is this near pot mountain or were you were you earlier saying that i can't remember if it was the 1970s case he told you about or the recent case that was near pot mountain right uh he told me about a few cases um he did focus on one case that did happen on the same land as the present um, story with his bull. Um, they both happened at Pot Mountain. Okay, so this so, recent one was Pot Mountain. Yep, yep. The one he uh, told me about that happened in the 70s was there at Pot Mountain, yes. And also this recent one. And the recent one, yes. And that's out there kind of in the field where the uh, yep. tent craft was? Yeah, yeah. In fact, when I was driving on this road, there's actually a windmill and a stock tank um, out here. Um, just like, yeah, out in these flats, you know, you'll run into stock tanks that are set on windmills um, and you'll see cows and stuff like that. Um congregating around those areas josh that was awesome you pulled up google earth and you gave me the visualization that i've always wanted for this story uh you answered so many questions that i had about this i really appreciate it thank you so much for your time um is there anything else uh you'd like to share or um anywhere people can follow you on the internet well thanks for having me will that was a lot of fun um yeah it's been great um, yeah, and you can get a hold of me at uh, my Instagram's Big Fire Josh, or you can just hit me up on Facebook, Josh Brinkley. Um, yeah, and if you have any, uh, if anyone out there has any encounters or stories they want to share, just let me know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been great. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you. Appreciate your time. Take it easy, Josh. All right, thank you. Have a good one. Wow, incredible testimony from Josh Brinkley. What do you all think about that testimony? I'm also very curious what you all think about these cattle mutilations and who is responsible for them. This is a well-documented phenomenon. There are thousands of reports of these things, and the FBI has even got involved. What do you think is happening? Please let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you all. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share with someone you think might find this interesting. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out the description um, for a link to my book, Enigmatic North America, 
Legends, Oddities, and Forbidden History. It's not out at the time of this recording, but by the time you watch this, it very well might be, so please check that description. I've worked really hard on that, and it's a good way to support the channel while um, getting a product from me that I've worked really hard on. All right, everybody, thanks for watching Incredible History. Until next time, take care.